It's a scathing attack on President Trump in the op-ed pages of the Washington Post, notable not just for its argument, but because of its author. White House counsel John Dean famously told Nixon that there was a cancer in the presidency and that it was growing, the column says. What the Mueller report disturbingly shows with crystal clarity is that today there is a cancer in the presidency, President Donald J. Trump. Congress now bears the solemn constitutional duty to excise that cancer without delay. It's a call for impeachment, not from a liberal Democrat, but from a prominent conservative, George Conway, the husband of one of the president's closest advisors, Kellyanne Conway. Is he out on a limb here? I think that he has decided to put himself out front as someone who has been part of the conservative legal establishment. I think he does have a unique voice and he's trying to use it in a way that is productive for the country. It's unique in that in calling for impeachment, the Republican Conway is going further than top Democrats in Congress. Nancy Pelosi saying last month of Trump, he's just not worth it. And her number two, Steny Hoyer, telling CNN Thursday, impeachment is not worthwhile at this point. Well, he doesn't have the political considerations that they have. So the Democrats in Congress obviously have their own political calculations that they're trying to make as far as 2020. George Conway writes that Mueller's report describes a relentless torrent of obstructive activity by Trump in the investigation into Russian election interference, calling it presidential attempts to abuse power. Conway's wife says there was no obstruction. That report makes very clear that this White House and this president and none of us uh, got in their way. George Conway, who says he turned down a job in the Trump administration, has been a relentless critic of Trump's since the president took office, once rather colorfully describing the White House as like a shit show in a dumpster fire. Last month, George Conway tweeted that Trump's mental health, quote, is getting worse and posted screen grabs from a psychiatric manual of conditions including narcissistic personality disorder. On his Twitter bio, Conway now sarcastically calls himself a windmill cancer survivor, a reference to a recent false tirade by the president against, of all things, windmills. And they say the noise causes cancer. You tell me that one. <laughs> Conway has been careful to separate his wife from his criticism of Trump, saying on a Yahoo podcast that he was proud of her accomplishments as Trump's campaign manager. My wife did an amazing thing. I mean, she, she basically got this guy elected. Trump, on the other hand, has made Conway's criticism personal, calling him a stone-cold loser and weighing in on the Conway's marriage. Well, I don't know him. I, yeah, I don't know him. Uh, he's a whack job. There's no question about it. But I really don't know him. He... Uh, I think he's doing a tremendous disservice to a wonderful wife. Is Conway being fair in his comparison of Trump's White House to former White House counsel John Dean and Dean's famous warning to Richard Nixon? One of the foremost scholars on Nixon believes he is. The Mueller report is pretty close to what we were looking at during Watergate. Um, the calls to have people fired, the moves to block the investigation. Where is George Conway taking all this? Is he trying to rally more conservatives to get behind a drive for impeachment? One of his colleagues in the group Checks and Balances tells us they believe Conway simply wants people to look at obstruction through a constitutional lens and not a political one, and that he wants to, Congress to see its role in that. Now, George Conway is not saying right now where he wants to take this. He would not comment for our story, and neither Kellyanne Conway nor anyone at the White House would comment on George Conway's op-ed or comment on our story.